Hello, I'm Joe Ferguson. Uh, this is my studio in Weston. I've been doing sculpture for 60 years or so, and um, if you'll follow me, we'll go inside. Cambridge Baptist Church allowed me to um, experiment with the concrete. Okay, I was always looking for different ways to set the stained glass uh, in uh, different mediums, and this is um, this was a chance to do it with this commission over in Old Cambridge Baptist Church in uh, Cambridge, 1962, and this glass was set in concrete. Uh, it was a memorial window for uh, Dean Samuel Miller, who'd been a minister in the church there. The idea here is that this is a tree of life, the symbolism, and the tree itself is the dark part reaching out. And there are three symbols of God in the top of it, the sun, the measuring the universe, and the seven stars of creation, fire, then at the bottom there are thorns and things like that that suggest real life. Another way of using concrete and, and using glass uh, in the Cambridge church was given to me by Le Corbusier, uh, the architect, the great architect, and he did a chapel in Grandchamp in France where he, they cast very deep concrete shafts and put a little piece of glass uh, on the outside so that the concrete shafts would receive the reflected light from from the small piece of glass at the end, it would sort of amplify the color uh, being projected onto the inside of this great wall of uh, concrete. So it made an abstract pattern. We made some forms of plywood with shafts that uh, uh, allowed for the insertion of a piece of glass at, at the outside part of it. And then we just uh, shoveled it full of concrete. It was an interesting process, and fortunately I had a fellow with me that was very good at doing that sort of thing. Uh, the end product, again, is using light, using the uh, dynamics of it uh, so that it, the presentation of the reflected light on the Concrete is always changing, and as the light diminishes, the blues take over, and as the sun reaches its zenith, it becomes a yellow.
I was asked to do some work for the Christian Science Pavilion. In the center, there was a kind of obelisk with some sayings from Mary Baker Eddy scribed on it. The committee got together before the opening, and Daryl Stone, who was the architect of the pavilion, came in, and he was like God Almighty, and he said, it looks like a marble grave, and everybody seemed to agree with him, and uh, it was resolved that I decorate the column with uh, stained glass. The second year, uh, it was decided that the obelisk was not a good representation of Mary Baker's uh, religion, so we had to decide what to do. And so I made a model of a stained glass tree. The pavilion was sort of circular and had a glass a ceiling, so I, I made this tree sort of soaring up into the glass uh, ceiling. It was welded steel, and um, it was 24 feet high, 14 feet in diameter, quite a large object. To build it, I had to cut a hole in the floor of my studio, my barn, which gave me 24 feet from the basement up to the ceiling. Uh, I welded together a big armature that looked like a tree, had branches that stretched out 14 feet, and then uh, made sections of uh, stained glass bound with copper foil and hung them onto this tree. And um, it looked pretty good. Uh, uh, I was very happy with it anyway. And the symbolism was the growth of a tree or the growth of life itself. And I was happy with that. Most people seemed to be, too. It took about two years of my life to um, build these structures. In this, uh, I build an armature of bar stock and then put angle iron frame, had angle iron frameworks made for the various people that diminished as they went higher. Um, and then the glass was set into these, into all of these uh, angle iron frameworks. There were 26 windows in the chapel. So it was an awful lot of welding. I had to learn how to weld to do this and uh, had to work with union people and uh, it was really quite a job. Unfortunately, the chapel's been destroyed since then. Things go on, things evolve. The Vernon Commission I did for the, the same architect I'd done with the Pierce Chapel. He designed a um, truncated pyramid where the top of the pyramid was chopped off at an angle and there was a big skylight there. And um, my chore was to fill that skylight. The architect said he wanted to have something like crinkled cellophane. so. Uh, I had 300 um, acrylic tetrahedrons manufactured and um, I hung them into this skylight from beneath this skylight. Uh, I also did uh, side windows that were uh, a red abstraction. The um, Vernon Church had real problems with infiltration of water. The construction was unique and interesting and then in a theoretical way, um, all of the uh, sides of the pyramid were cast T-bars of concrete, and they were sort of locked together. But the problem was that um, they leaked like a sieve, and no amount of caulking of, of the joints between the um, sections of concrete 
uh, was able to stop the leaking, and eventually it was torn down. Traditions of Wayland is a retirement home. I wanted to get the message of life and uh, the cycles of life. The central panel is supposed to convey the idea of life, the living of life, and the thrill of, of living itself. The latter panel is more somber, and that has to do with the cycles of life that there is a beginning, and that there is an ending. He had a unique situation with a, a, a large window over their dining room table that was at an angle and uh, really lit the whole room. I wanted to keep it light and airy, and so I built this um, three-dimensional construction of colored glass triangles to um, give the impression of, of water. This friend is also a yachtsman, and, and he's always on the water all the time. So it seemed just appropriate, and he was very happy. And the Running Tide name came later on. At this time, I was making small models that tried to still use the stained glass um, without a lot of metal around it, uh, almost uh, taking the um, screen construction out of the uh, surrounding wooden form, setting it up to be outside. The original model was soldered together, but I'd uh, improved my welding in aluminum so that I could uh, repeat the uh, soldered a uh, small model in uh, welded aluminum and uh, aluminum bar stock. This was really helpful to make an, uh, outdoor pieces and the only thing I had to do with that was weld flanges onto the uh, bar, aluminum bar stock so that I could insert the acrylic colored plastic it was really fun to do this. I was happy to give this to the Burlington Art Association.